Hey everyone and welcome to Boston Autoblog. On this channel, we have filmed almost every subcompact crossover in the luxury car segment, except for the Mercedes-Benz GLA. Now, thankfully, I waited long enough for the 2021 model to arrive because this vehicle is most certainly better than last generation. Now, when we talk about subcompact crossovers, you're probably going to argue that, well, they're more like lifted hatchbacks. When you look at dimensions, when you look at rear legroom and even rear cargo space, there's really not much of a difference. Now, unfortunately, in the United States, a lot of Americans prefer crossovers. They look at them as being more practical, but also a better value for the price. Now, for the GLA, it's one of the best-selling vehicles in this segment. And for 2021, they've made this vehicle even better. Much like most vehicles on the market today, the Mercedes-Benz GLA experiences a growth spurt from last generation. And we're seeing a lot more of this in the subcompact crossover segment as these vehicles are starting to lose their hatchback-like design qualities and become legitimate crossovers. And that's because Americans are really demanding practicality and size. They want a vehicle that can do it all. They want a vehicle that has the practicality for groceries and smaller items. They also want a vehicle that's sized right where they can fit their family but also at a reasonable price. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the new 2021 Mercedes-Benz GLA 250 and see why. If you're looking for a subcompact crossover that also offers a list of luxury features, then going with the Mercedes-Benz GLA might be a great decision. Now before we get in this review, I'd like to thank Mercedes-Benz of Burlington in Burlington, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Mercedes-Benz inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. One of Mercedes-Benz strengths heading into a new decade is that they can boast a lineup providing four models starting under $40,000 to appeal to a much wider range of consumers than their rivals. Where luxury brands have often struggled is drawing buyers to the subcompact crossovers and compact sedans they offer, as many would prefer going more upmarket to receive better practicality and a bigger vehicle. For Mercedes-Benz, they've outperformed their competitors with the GLA, as it's more popular than the BMW X1 and Audi Q3 here in the US. However, as the crossover market evolves and grows, changes were needed to meet the demands of Americans who are looking for a great overall value without breaking the bank. And that's exactly what Mercedes-Benz has done for the 2021 model year. Starting off with pricing, the Mercedes-Benz GLA 254 Matic comes in at $38,230, making it the most affordable crossover in the lineup. Without stating the obvious, a lot is new for the GLA this year, including improved dimensions that transform this vehicle from being somewhat hatchback-like to a legitimate subcompact crossover that's closer in size to many other competitors in this segment. Compared to last year, the GLA grows in width by 1.2 inches, but for height, an increase of 3.5 inches is going to translate to significantly more cargo space and a more spacious rear seating area for passengers. Going basically untouched will be the ground clearance, which comes in at 5.2 inches. So just like last generation, the GLA is still very much a lifted and more versatile and practical CLA. Up front, you're greeted by a completely redesigned front fascia that's an iteration of Mercedes-Benz current design language, which we're seeing throughout the lineup in 2020. With the GLA closely resembling the CLA in many regards, you'll probably notice some similar body lines and accents. But more importantly, 
this subcompact crossover loses the boxiness from last generation to have a more free-flowing road presence. Of course, you can option for the $2,600 AMG line package to add some aggressiveness to the front portion of the GLA. But with the denim blue paint color we have today contrasting nicely with the brushed aluminum and grill design, the spec leans more towards the classy side. You'll get LED headlights and fog lights, as halogens don't come standard for 2021. But you can upgrade to dynamic LED headlamps and adaptive high beam assist for improved illumination at night. Moving over to the side profile, our model is sitting on the optional 19-inch 10-spoke alloy wheels with matte black accents to give the GLA a slightly more bold appearance. It's from this angle where the GLA certainly goes from being a more lifted hatchback from last generation to a subcompact crossover that's going to offer a decent size for a vehicle in this segment. Our model today has power folding and heated side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. As you make your way to the back, this is where the GLA has its own unique design elements despite having a roof line that resembles the bigger GLC. Within the Mercedes-Benz lineup, this subcompact crossover receives its own set of LED taillights that differ from its A-Class and CLA siblings, which is actually unusual for vehicles that share the same platform. Letting you know that it's more rugged and adventurous than last year, plastic cladding will dominate the lower portion of the rear bumper to negate any critics claiming that it's a hatchback rather than a crossover. But Mercedes still found a way to integrate chrome into the rear design for the upscale look. Under the hood, the GLA 250 is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that puts out 221 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque and is paired with an 8-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. Compared to last year, there's been an increase of 13 horsepower to better compete against the BMW X1 and Audi Q3. For the drivetrain, front-wheel drive will come standard, but for an additional $2,000, you can option for the Mercedes-Benz 4MATIC all-wheel drive system for better year-round drivability and also a slightly better 0-60 time of 6.6 seconds. For fuel economy, you can expect to receive right around 24 miles per gallon in the city and 33 miles per gallon on the highway. Now, as we make our way into the interior portion of this review, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, from the outside, the Mercedes-Benz GLA is no different than an Audi Q3 or a BMW X1 or X2. So what can this vehicle offer me that the other two German brands can't? Well, that's where the interior comes into play because I'll tell you, in true Mercedes-Benz fashion, they're going to offer you a plethora of options that you're just not going to find on an Audi Q3 or a BMW X1 or X2. Now, the model we have today is right around $43,000, $44,000, and in my opinion, is well-equipped. This would personally be uh, enough for me. I have the digital gauge clusters. I have the 10.2-inch touchscreen. I have dual-zone climate control and heated front seats. But I can go with a number of other options, including ventilated seats. I can go with ambient lighting. I can go with the onboard navigation with augmented reality where you can get augmented turn-by-turn -turn navigation, which is just insane. You can have an onboard assistant. You can go with a panoramic sunroof. You can go with adjustable rear seats. It just doesn't stop. Uh, and we know this with Mercedes-Benz. They're always focused on the luxury aspect and luxury side of things. Uh, but for subcompact crossovers, you just don't expect that. You don't expect to have a number of options to choose from where you could go anywhere from $38,000 dollars to above fifty thousand dollars for a vehicle in this segment and that's exactly what we have here now the model we have today has macchiato beige interior this is uh, more of a leather rep material and i have to say it goes really well with a denim blue exterior but you can go with uh actual leather which i think would be more of a, a comfort feature uh, for this vehicle but to me uh, the leather at seats work just fine they have a good a good amount of bolstering so for me i'm comfortable and then of course you can also go with contoured seats on top of going with leather so 
This vehicle is just customizable in many ways, and the model we have today also has uh, three position memory seats for both the driver and passenger. So this vehicle is well equipped even at $43,000, but if you want to go with something a little extra, you can upgrade to a number of different features, which definitely makes owning the GLA and a subcompact crossover most certainly worth the price. Taking a more in-depth look at the interior of the GLA, in front of you is a 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster, giving this crossover a high tech and quite frankly a more upscale feel compared to some competitors in this segment. Made available to you is a variety of information, and by using the buttons mounted on the steering wheel, you can scroll through settings, such as what you see for the instrument panel, driver assistance features, navigation, and also you can quickly and easily change the music you listen to. As we look over to the 10.2 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, this is where Mercedes-Benz has balanced the premium layout while also retaining a sense of simplicity with a fully digital dashboard design that's also one piece. While this user interface does function as a touchscreen, you will have a trackpad to go along with quick access buttons to make navigating through different menus easy and user-friendly. Resolution and quality are top-notch, but not surprising is just how in-depth this infotainment system really is, as you could spend close to 30 minutes checking out all the features and information this screen provides. You'll get a rear backup camera with trajectory, but if you offer the parking assist package, a top view camera and active park assist will give you more confidence when driving in urban areas. Also, when it comes to the infotainment system and the trackpad, you're probably wondering, is it difficult to use? Is it going to require a learning curve? Because maybe you're not acclimated with higher technology in your vehicles. Now, we see some uh, competitors such as BMW and Audi use uh, a Rory dial and a touchpad, whereas we have a trackpad very similar to what we see in Acura and Lexus. And I have to say, this is so much more refined than what we see in Acura and Lexus because it's very responsive, but also you get impulses when you go over icons. And even better than what we see in Acura, when you take your hand off the trackpad, the icon is still selected. So I definitely like that. But when it comes to the fact that we have uh, a touchscreen functionality that definitely takes away a lot of the hesitancy and also maybe some of the anxiety you might have with using this infotainment system while driving. But the only learning curve or anything that you're gonna have to spend a lot of time looking at is the infotainment system itself because it's very in-depth. There's a lot of information here to work with and to look at and that's something we expect in this segment. But I like the fact that we have a responsive trackpad with quick access buttons on either side of the screen. So if you're focused on driving, you can easily get your navigation and map, your radio and media, your telephone, and your settings tab. So to me, this is so much more simplistic and easier to use, but also the dual functionality, it makes this uh, very user friendly. So. I definitely like what the Mercedes-Benz uh, products have now with this dual functionality, and it's most certainly better than what we see in Lexus and Acura. Below, you'll find the buttons for the dual zone climate control and fan speed and direction to go along with the front and rear defrosters. With the optional wireless phone charging pad not equipped on this model, we do have a cubby for a smartphone or wallet. For the center console itself, a USB-C input and 12-volt outlet will be conveniently placed within arm's reach. And on either side of the trackpad will be a volume knob and the drive mode selector, which affects throttle response, gear shifts, and slightly changes up steering input. It should also be noted that since we don't have a gear shift lever to maximize front shoulder room, there will be an added stock on the steering wheel column, which is actually very retro for a crossover in 2020. In rounding out the front seating area, for the center storage compartment, you'll find enough room for small items, and you'll also have an additional USB-C input. Now for passengers in the back, we're going to start off on the passenger side, and I adjust the seat most of the way back. It's also on a recline, and I still have a few inches of room to work with here. Now keep in mind, I am around 5'5", so I'm not the tallest person out there, but if someone around maybe 6 foot tall is in front of me, it's good to know that I still be comfortable. Also, for 2021, you gain four inches of legroom, and you most certainly feel that. This vehicle seems a lot larger than advertised and also just the segment that it's in. Most subcompact crossovers, even the luxury segment, are pretty tight. But also, I feel the width a lot more. I have a lot more shoulder room. This vehicle does not feel cramped at all. However, there is one slight difference when it comes to headroom. 
you lose about three tenths of an inch. Now you're not going to notice that at all. I do think people are maybe, you know, five, nine, five, ten could be comfortable back here on a daily basis, but also it helps that we do not have a moon roof. So that would certainly affect headroom for sure. Now, when it comes to legroom uh, for the center seat, I still think that for vehicles in this segment, it's just not practical to fit a third person on a daily basis. In fact, I would recommend checking out a GLB. The GLB has a less aggressive middle hump, and I think you could most certainly fit a third person in the center, especially if you have three kids back here. And then on the driver's side, I adjust the seat to someone of my height around 5'5", five five, and I have plenty of legroom to work with here. So overall, this vehicle is very spacious. I think for a smaller family, this most certainly works. And like I said before, when it comes to shoulder room, you feel it. You certainly feel it. This does not feel like a subcompact crossover. And I have to say, compared to last generation, this vehicle is definitely feeling more like a subcompact crossover rather than a lifted hatchback. Also back here, you will get two rear air vents to go along with two USB-C inputs and a plug outlet. So if you have a laptop or maybe even an iPad, you can watch some videos or get some work done on a longer drive. And then rounding out the rear seating area, we do not get a center armrest with two cup holders, but those cup holders make their way onto the door panels. And then coming around to the back, this is where we're going to see another improvement from last generation, thanks to the size and growth that the GLA is experiencing for 2021. Now you will get a power lift gate, and inside you're gonna find right around 15.4 cubic feet of rear cargo room. Now that's about a half cubic foot difference from last generation. But then with the rear seats folded down, that space more than doubles in size to 50 and a half cubic feet, which is about a seven cubic foot difference from last year. So the GLA for 2021 is definitely more crossover-like rather than being more of a lifted hatchback. And I think this is gonna make uh, this vehicle a lot more appealing if you're looking for a practical vehicle for daily driving purposes. And then on either side of the rear cargo area, you are gonna find some netting for some smaller items. So if you have water bottles or maybe even car detail equipment, you can leave them right there and they won't spill on to your more valuable items. And then of course, you will have a rear cargo cover, which keeps all your valuable items out of sight. So if you maybe went to a restaurant and you had some camera gear with you like myself, uh, you can leave that right there and you had that peace of mind knowing that no one is going to be able to peek in and steal what you have. And then once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. All right, so let's take the Mercedes-Benz GLA out for a test drive. As you can probably tell, it's a completely different day. It's cloudy, it's rainy, typical New England weather for fall. And that's because I had already filmed this video. I'd already filmed the test drive portion, but the files got corrupted. So it gives me another opportunity to test drive this vehicle and see what I think about it. So since I've already test driven the GLA before, I can hop right into the driving impressions for this crossover. And with what Mercedes-Benz has done by making this vehicle a little bit bigger is that it feels very similar to a BMW X1 and also an Audi Q3. But more importantly is that when it comes to shoulder room, you feel as though you're in a much bigger crossover than in reality. And I was kind of surprised that there's only a two inch difference when it comes to width compared to the GLC. Of course, uh, lengthwise, the GLA is about about 10 inches shorter. So you definitely feel that in terms of length, this isn't as long of a vehicle, but just when it comes to being behind the wheel and driving, and even in the passenger side, uh, this feels like a much bigger crossover, which is definitely uh, a plus if you're not looking for a vehicle that's the size of a GLC or even the price of a GLC. And then also when it comes to the size of the GLA, it's sized perfectly in my opinion, because when you're on a tight street with two lanes, you don't feel as though that you're kind of getting close to the other traffic if they're going left and you're going straight. Uh, you can definitely maneuver this vehicle very well and that's perfect if you live in urban areas, especially where Mercedes-Benz is promoting this vehicle to younger people are maybe 25, 35 years old that most likely are gonna be living in Boston, New York and other cities. And you're gonna to wanna to have a vehicle that adds that practicality standpoint, but also something that's um, you know not too big where you can't park this on city streets. So I like the size, especially where if you don't need a vehicle the size of a GLC, I think the GLA is perfect. And then also when it comes to ride height. Now the GLA sits at around 5.2 inches for ground clearance. And interestingly enough, 
with the way the seating position is, you feel as though you're a lot higher up off the ground, which is definitely a good perception to have, especially where if you're looking for a vehicle that is perfect for year-round versatility, especially where this has formatic all-wheel drive, I think you're gonna feel as though this is definitely capable of going through harsh winters. Also, what I didn't notice with this Mercedes-Benz GLE that I had two days ago is I do have an onboard assistant. So I can say, hey Mercedes, how can I help? Turn on my heated seats. I'm switching on the seat heating. And here we go. I now have heated seats on the somewhat chilly fall day in New England. So that's really cool to have. We're seeing a lot more of that in the German car segment where they are offering um, onboard assistance. That, that makes it a lot more safe, especially where if you're really focused on driving and keeping your eyes on the road, you don't have to worry about looking down at buttons and turning them on. So I, I definitely like that. One last important feature on the GLA, and I think mo in most Mercedes-Benz as well, is that the infotainment system is actually not at eye level. It's lower towards the dashboard design, uh, closer towards your air vents. And I definitely appreciate that because a lot of German brands now have these huge infotainment systems at eye level and it definitely gets into your peripheral vision and it draws your attention away from driving. Whereas with this infotainment system, it's definitely lower towards the dashboard and it's more integrated in the dashboard where even though it is a secondary piece, it seems as though it just flows with the design and I most certainly appreciate that as a driver. I don't wanna have that screen dominate my eyesight uh, while I'm driving. And to me, I think that's just a great ingenious design to work with, especially where right now everything's about infotainment systems and providing in-depth uh, user interfaces. And, and this is definitely user-friendly for sure, but also better when it comes to safety. All right, so we're gonna put this car in sport mode and see how this vehicle does getting on the highway. Now we do have 221 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Now, those are numbers very similar to a lot of vehicles in this segment, but also the Volkswagen GTI. Now, you get a lot of power. You can really get up to speed very quickly when you're getting on the highway. So, to me, I have a lot of confidence when I get on the road. And then when putting the GLA in sport mode, it changes up throttle response and uh, also steering as well. Steering input tightens up a bit. Not as aggressive as you'd have in a sports car or maybe even the GLA 35 AMG, but it definitely gives you more of an engaged driving experience for sure. You can just throw the GLA into the corners at lower speeds, of course, because on higher speeds, you definitely feel a body roll, and that's to be expected with this not being on a sports-tuned suspension, but it's not as bad as you'd find in, say, a bigger crossover. And then when it comes to sport mode, I highly recommend driving that on winding back roads or on the highway because in city and urban driving, where you are gonna encounter stop and go traffic, you are gonna notice that this vehicle holds the gears very well and you can rev a lot higher. And for non-enthusiasts, that would get very annoying. So I understand why you'd wanna put this in comfort. I would prefer putting this in comfort as well. All right, so as I do the loop back towards the dealership, Lasting impression really for the GLA is that it's very maneuverable. Uh, you can get around tight corners, you can go around parked cars on tighter streets, and this vehicle is definitely suited for the consumer who lives in the city. So for me, I just think overall it's a great value because you get the practicality, you get a lot of cargo space compared to last generation where when the rear seat's folded down, you can fit a lot more stuff. Also, when it comes to having passengers in the back, if you have a young family, you can fit two kids back there, definitely for sure. And this vehicle is just overall practical. And I think that's what makes the GLA a very popular vehicle in this segment. And more so now than ever, because you do lose that hatchback-like quality. And this is more of a crossover. So overall, I think if you're looking to upgrade from your GLA, and maybe you don't want a GLC necessarily, I think going for the 2021 model year is a great balance. It definitely balances out well, where you have that feeling as though you're in a bigger vehicle, but you still are in that subcompact range. So at the end of the day, after taking this vehicle out for the second time this week, I had to say the GLA really surprises me when it comes to the features you can get. Because as you guys have probably noticed in the last few videos that we've done for subcompact crossovers in the luxury car segment, I said that German rivals really don't offer their best in this segment. 
And I'm going to eat my words on that because the GLA provides quite a lot when it comes to optional features. Now, of course, at $43,000, I have everything I'm looking for. I have the full digital gauge cluster with the infotainment system. I have the onboard assistant. I have three position memory seats for both the driver and passenger. I have heated seats. I also have dual zone climate control. But then again, I can, I can get so much more. I can option for so much more. I can go with you know, ventilated seats. I can go with leather seats, contoured seats. It just does not stop. It seems as though the list just goes on forever and you can sit at the configurator for 30 minutes and try figuring out, well, what can I go with? What can I sacrifice? And I definitely like that, especially where if you are on a budget, you don't need a vehicle the size of a GLC, but you do want to have that luxury car feature and you want to have that luxury car uh, feeling, then the GLA actually offers that uh, in many ways. Also, like too, it's more practical than last year. It's not as hatchback-like. Also, if you want to uh, you know, pack up two people in the back, you can. They're going to be very comfortable. That extra legroom definitely makes a significant difference. It makes this vehicle seem a lot larger than it really is. So for 2021, uh, my lasting impressions and my lasting words would probably be that this vehicle changes your perception of the subcompact crossover segment. It might not be as long as an Audi Q3, and it may not be you know, as wide as some other uh, competitors, but when it comes to shoulder room, this feels certainly, uh, you know, like a bigger crossover, like a compact crossover. So to me, I like what Mercedes-Benz has done to this vehicle. They've made some significant upgrades. They've made this vehicle so much better than last generation, despite the fact that the GLA was the best-selling crossover in this segment when it comes to uh, the German rivals and even some non-German rivals. So to me, uh, they've perfected this vehicle in many ways. They've made it more luxurious. They've made it more comfortable all around, but also they've made it more practical. So I definitely recommend taking this vehicle out for a test drive because I think you're going to be impressed, especially at $40,000. I, I just was not expecting to get everything um, that I would be looking for. Of course, you can go with augmented reality and you know just go all out in terms of futuristic uh, features and, and design. But I like this vehicle at $40,000 and I think you will too. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.